My name is Ali. I'm a doctor and YouTuber. I'm Taymor. I'm a data scientist and writer. And you're listening to Not Overthinking, the weekly podcast where we think about happiness, creativity, and the human condition. Hello, welcome back to Not Overthinking. Ali, how are you doing this week? Oh, I'm doing absolutely fantastically. I've started a new job. I'm on my psychiatry placement. Life is good. What about you? Nice. Yeah, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. We had a, we went to an Ed Sheeran concert yesterday. That was a, a novel cultural experience for me. You, you've been to a few concerts before. I've been to a few before. I went to the Taylor Swift Hyde Park one several years ago, which was all right, but it had very much outdoor vibes, which I wasn't really a huge fan of. But then recently I went to the Hugh Jackman concert at the O2 Arena in London, and that was just absolutely incredible. And now... Um, I kind of get when I say a concert was quote absolutely incredible. <laughs> I sound like people <laughs> who I would have kind of scoffed at in the past for being like, "Oh, come on, absolutely incredible! What are you talking about?" But yeah. like genuinely, this Hugh Jackman concert like a few months ago was absolutely sick, and there were several songs where like the whole audience was like singing along and standing up, and I actually had tears in my eyes on several of the Aww. several of the numbers. Um, so that's how I would define that as being incredible. And I just love Ed Sheeran; he's my favorite kind of artist of all time. But I'm not sure the outdoor arena vibe is as good as the indoor arena vibe. Yeah, I have some thoughts about that. But before we get into this, um, a couple of bits of housekeeping. The first is that we are now, I think as of two weeks ago, we're now reading a review at the start of each uh, episode. And so there was a really good review that was left by Detroit underscore 96 uh, on the 8th, on the 5th of August, um, my birthday. Uh, the birthday. review was titled, Definitely a Good Podcast. Um, and Detroit says... I started watching from Ali's YouTube and thought I'd give the podcast a try. I never really got into podcasts before, but I really like this one and I'm almost caught up with the most recent one. I like how the two are more more like relaxed and casual rather than being super formal, have some kind of acted out attitude, which I find in some podcasts. They're not trying to teach me anything or tell me what's right, which might be something some people would like. But for me, I like how they just chat on their own with the topic and it gives me a catalyst to thinking of how I think about the topic. Sometimes I agree, discovering a new perspective, which is nice, while others I just listen and think that people have different thoughts overall it's a comfortable and nice podcast i hope they keep going on this was this is like the i my my favorite kind of review okay why is that <laughs> you know that i don't like the whole advice giving thing and like yeah my my whole yeah my whole goal with this would be to basically provide a catalyst for people to do their own thinking about stuff you know we yeah you know, we just like talk about a topic spark you know it sparks some thoughts within whoever's listening um and it helps people kind of think about the topic themselves and reach their own conclusions and, and that's that's exactly what i like this to be and it seems like detroit 96 agrees and gets it so this made me really really happy so thank you uh detroit 96 okay uh i'm not going to rail against your uh anti-advice giving mentality yeah, we, in we've this done episode. that many times we've <laughs> done that many a time um for the record i think giving advice about things that we feel comfortable giving advice about is absolutely fine um um, when it comes to things like, you know, how do we make friends and stuff? I think that's more of a, you know, an arena in which it's more about sharing, sharing different perspectives and people can come to their own conclusions. But if it's, for example, an episode about, you know, how do I read more? And most people reading this uh, and most people listening to this podcast would not necessarily be reading five books a week. Yes, fine. All right. Okay. You know, we've been, we've been through this. We, we, we've been through this. Okay. <laughs> what are we talking about this week? <laughs> that was a nice review from Detroit. Thank you, Detroit. You're the best. Uh, okay. So this week, there is something I wanted to talk about. So after this Ed Sheeran concert, we had like a four hour drive home from Leeds. And there were sort of four of us who went, me and you and a couple of our friends, right? And it kind of, you know, obviously after the concert, we had a, you know, a retrospective, a, a sort of post-concert analysis, right? Yeah. About like how we felt about the whole thing. Um, and naturally, I had some thoughts about the concert. <laughs> okay. Um, and, okay, I'll tell you my thoughts and then we can sort of get into it. My thoughts were that... Uh, so Lewis Capaldi came on before Ed just for a, like a half an hour warm up set uh, for those of you who don't know Lewis Capaldi is the guy who sings that song Some, Somebody to Love I need somebody to hear somebody to know somebody to hear somebody to hold you know that one like, you would have heard it it was like number one on the charts for several weeks yeah yeah, yeah. really popular song anyway I, I didn't really know much about this guy I haven't really listened to his music but it was really cool because I mean he, he, he went up there and sang like three or four songs or whatever but in between he was just kind of chatting to the audience and bantering and stuff and kind of making jokes and he was genuinely funny um and seemed like a chill guy and he was like trying to connect with the audience so that was i thought that was sick i thought man concerts are great if this is what happens and i expected that ed would come on and have a similar thing where yes obviously during the two hour set he will play you know 10 or 12 of his songs or whatever it is but i thought like the main appeal for this kind of thing would be to kind of connect with ed rather than just hear him play his songs because i mean i i can listen to his songs in better quality in my room on spotify right you kind of i would have thought you go to like a live event to 
to feel some kind of connection with the performer and feel some kind of connection with your sort of fellow human beings who are there in this shared experience with you. And I kind of felt like Ed did not, I, I don't know, I, I didn't really feel the connection and it didn't feel like most of the crowd felt the connection either. He just kind of was up there singing his songs. He said maybe like one sort of canned line in between each song of like, oh, this is a song I wrote, this song, whatever. Um, and, but there wasn't much like chit-chatting and connection. Whereas when I've been to other things, you know, like if you go to the theater or if you go to like see Darren Brown or something, yes, they're, they're obviously giving the same show every single night to a slightly different audience. But I, you know, watching Darren Brown, I did genuinely feel there was a connection and I felt like the whole audience was together connecting with Darren. And I didn't feel that with, with Ed. Okay, so I was quite... Um I was quite uncomfortable when you were saying all these things in the car. Really? Because what I had going through my head was, look, we've literally just spent a whole day coming to this concert. We spent like, you know, 300 pounds on tickets between the four of us. We've driven four hours to Leeds, for God's sake of all places, and then come all the way back. And it seemed as if kind of poking holes in the experience was just counterproductive. Like it's it's not as if you're you're writing a feedback email to send to Ed and, you know, explain that, like, look, bro, I think you should connect with the audience more. It's just, you're just having a negative run about this experience that we've all just been through where it seems to serve no real purpose um and that is what that was why when you were like ali what do you think i was like oh well you know i, th I thought it was good because i had these kind of thoughts going through my head that i don't want to be overly negative about this experience plus i just love it and everything about him so yeah okay so I'm, I'm glad you made that comment because the topic i wanted to talk about this week is negativity and disagreement and like before before making that comment or oh, that rant in the car i kind of thought long and hard about like okay <laughs> <laughs> right. i have some thoughts <laughs> what is there any point in me voicing these <laughs> yeah um and i thought i thought it would be interesting to uh to see what to see what the rest of you guys thought about it because i think like yeah for a while my my policy on on negativity has been basically not you know, that sort of making any kind of negative comments or sort of um yeah anything like that about an experience or about anything is just sort of pointless it doesn't really achieve anything i think when i was younger i used to do it a lot and i don't know i don't know i think it ties into the whole uh, episode one thing of wanting to score points and like be correct and sort of scoring like criticism points whereas now i think crit criticism is extremely cheap and mostly worthless um and so i kind of gen generally feel like there's no point voicing any negativity about anything yeah that's that's the vibe that i have about about most things in life so i recently like as of a few months ago started routinely well not routinely but occasionally going to the cinema by myself and one thing that i really like about going to the cinema by myself is that there is no post film rep retrospective because <laughs> i because i usually have a very low a low bar for enjoying a film like if it's got the marvel logo at the front <laughs> and that comic book stripe kind of go <laughs> yeah that's so that, cool at the yeah start. it's yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. safe but if, if it's got that logo you know chances are i'm going to enjoy the film even something that was you know critically acclaimed as being bad like batman versus superman even something like game of thrones that the latest season was you know everyone was like oh my god i hate game of thrones i thought you know what it's actually pretty good i quite enjoyed it and i don't i don't enjoy it when people are poking holes in, in stuff and i certainly don't want to be the guy that is being negative about this creative pursuit that i have no idea how much effort it took to because like you know as you said criticism is cheap and easy it's so easy to sit there and criticize something without having any appreciation for the amount of effort the amount of you know manpower yeah everything that's, that's gone into it and as you said it just seems to serve no real purpose um so i'm very much in that camp but i wonder if there is if if that's if that's too extreme extreme of you to hold yeah i get what you mean about the movie thing i uh i yeah i i think yeah i really hate it when like you come out of a movie and and if it's like a space movie or something uh then you know people are like oh my god that was so unrealistic that's not how black holes work or whatever you know <laughs> it's yeah. just like the worst thing <laughs> so i i i agree that i don't i don't really like the sort of post film or whatever uh, critique. Okay, so w what prompted you to, uh, <laughs> you know, launch a tirade against Ed Sheeran <laughs> and his lack of connectivity with the audience? Because you would have presumably had all these thoughts before being like, right, guys, <laughs> what do we all think about how this concert went? <laughs> I'll share my views first. <laughs> I don't think that's how it went. I think I asked. Hey guys, so what do we think about that? No one answered, and then, and then later later on, I brought it up again, and then said my views. Um, I think the reason I did it was because partly because I felt I've been feeling for a while this this whole like blanket ban on negativity that I've kind of tried to implement is a bit too far, and that sh surely there is some value. You know, there is value in having interesting discussions about 
things and how we feel about things and what we think about things. Okay, so so and, and and I suppose from your perspective, having never really been to a concert before, you were thinking, you know, is this is this normal? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, it was like my my first sort of concert or whatever. You'd been to a few. I think Paul had been to one or two. Shweb had been to one or two. And so yeah, it was partly just like you know, genuinely, what did you guys think? Because I don't know, maybe I'm doing it wrong or something. Maybe more, I, I'm expecting too much or something like that. But even even if that weren't the case. It feels kind of weird to have a blanket ban on neg. Like, why? Okay, let's say you come out of a film and people are talking about it. Why does? Why is making positive comments like any different to making neg? Why? Why aren't b- any kind of comments just seen as like you know getting your fellow human beings' thoughts on X thing? You know, if it's like a negative comment, why does that put a downer on it for you somehow? Okay, so that's a good point. Um, if it's just a case of I want to I want to hear your thoughts on it, just to connect with my fellow human being. Then then I think that's that's one thing. The problem with it being, I want to get your thoughts on this, and this is what I thought about it that was negative, is that I feel like it would tarnish your retrospective enjoyment of the event. Because a big part about kind of happiness is the the sort of selective memories that we create about certain events. Um, in actually, in in last week's of my in in last week's uh, issue of my email newsletter, which you can subscribe to at email.aliabdal.com, I was referencing a blog post that some skiing a professional skiing guy had had written, where he was talking about different types of fun he said this type one fun which is like you know the pure hanging out with your mates you know having a great time playing video games type of fun then there's type two fun which is sort of trekking up a difficult mountain and at the end of it you're like damn i'm really glad i did that and then over time as you look back on your memories of that trek up the mountains you forget the negative bits and you know the fact it was cold and wet and miserable and you just remember the enjoyment aspect of it so so actively reminding ourselves that oh oh, actually you know it was pretty wet and grim and miserable going up this mountain i think is self-sabotage in a way because we are responsible for the story that we tell ourselves about these events and so if we are taking a negative stance on them we're literally just snaking ourselves like there is nothing to be gained from that unless we're kind of doing valid criticism which is why i don't like this negativity thing but i i I take your point that you know what if you are just getting getting your fellow people's thoughts about you know how was rupert grint's acting in that scene (laughs) yeah no no so i i totally agree about like you know most of the kind of value we get out of events and holidays and things like that is like looking forward to it beforehand and then like reminiscing on it afterwards i i agree with that and so i think I I think, yeah, I agree with what you're saying, but I wonder why it's the case that basically it seems like making, you know, quote, uh, positive comments and quote, negative comments. Why why are there these two categories of positive and negative that like tarnish our uh, sort of reminiscing about these experiences? Why is it not just, you know, we went to this Ed Sheeran thing, we had this experience, there are some thoughts associated with it. Like you can, I think you can, I mean, I certainly found it really, it was my first concert, it was really interesting. I'm really glad I went. Um, And so even though I, you know, I had those thoughts that like, I didn't really connect with Ed. I didn't feel like Ed was really speaking directly to me or whatever, you know, (laughs) even though (laughs) he didn't personally give me a hug. I can. I still think it was an interesting okay. and valuable experience. So, like, why why have this whole positive versus negative thing where you're trying to like evaluate something? Okay, so you're saying you're uh, dissociating your experience of the event from the sort of the thoughts you're having about it afterwards, and whether you're saying and and if you're saying something like, oh well, I didn't really feel he connected with the audience, that doesn't really take away from the fact that overall it was a it was a very positive and interesting kind of experience that you're glad you did, even though you might not want to do it again. Yeah, exactly. So you're saying you're dissociating those two things. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the case that. Uh, kind of quote, criticizing it afterwards would actually impact on your retrospective enjoyment of the event. Yeah, why? Uh, yeah, I guess like why should why should like criticism affect our retrospective enjoyment of it? You know, why are positive and negative like categories here is what I'm really asking. Do you know what I mean? Well, because that's the way you're phrasing it. You're like uh, it's, something happened, an event happened, and you're saying I wish it were different. <laughs> you're okay. doing that classic thing of you know happiness equals expectations minus reality. The reality was a certain thing, and your expectations or your hopes of that were higher. That oh. I wish Ed had given me, personally given me a hug. I wish Ed had, you know, sounded as, as if he was physically speaking to me directly. Yeah. Uh, and that would have increased my enjoyment of this event. After the fact, now, you know, once once the event has already happened, which is why when when that becomes a negative delta, <laughs> then that becomes a negative thing. Okay. Which is yeah, why positive fine. and negative exists. So I don't really get the point that you're making. Yeah, I guess it just feels kind of off to suppress, like, you know, parts of your thoughts and feelings sort of indiscriminately just because like when you look back on things they'll be happier or something it feels it feels a bit off doesn't it if it feels a bit off um i wonder if 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 there is something something valuable to that though so um 
for example, we all know people who are who would who, who who in general we would describe as positive, and we both know people. We all know people who would in general we describe as negative. Yeah, and we'd probably suggest that you know if we could look internally, the positive people are probably having a happier time of life more so than than the negative people are. Yes, and like you know people people would certainly describe me as being positive. In fact, uh, I gave some thank you cards to like several uh, senior doctors that I was working with in my previous job. And a lot of them texted me saying that your positive attitude was really nice. And, you know, the, the, the word positive has been described to, to my attitude a lot. And I put that down to a lot of the fact that I just don't complain about anything, even if I'm feeling bad about how something went. I just tend not to complain about it. And I think that it's it's kind of that concept in neuroscience, you know, this this thing of the more the, 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 the there's a phrase that uh, axons that fire together wire together. So the more kind of in your brain, the more positive thoughts you have, the more your brain then gets wired for positive thoughts and emotions. The more negative thoughts you have, the more complaining you do, the more your brain like physically gets wired for negative thoughts and emotions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and so that. having this, for example, this blanket ban on any sort of negativity, any sort of complaining at all, 100%, I think overall does a lot of us more good than, you know, the slight 1% intellectual interestingness we'd gain from critiquing whether Ed was really connecting with Tamer or not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I agree. So like, I, I think like, I think the blanket ban on negativity is good and a good solution. Mm. But I think there are... I think it could do with some nuance as to when it's valuable to like have these, you know, critique kind of discussions and when it's valuable to not. And I, I think the vast majority of the time it is not valuable, just to be clear. I think it is mostly pointless to uh, sort of complain about things and, and you know, kind of. Yeah, that, that, I think negativity is mostly pointless, but it feels weird to say that it's always pointless. And for example, if all of us had come out of that concert thinking, oh, that was kind of rubbish, but in the car, it was like, so what do we think, lads? And I was like, yep, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's weird, right? Like, yeah, I feel okay, like I we would all have had a, had, a, had like a nicer time in the car yeah. if we like shared the experience of like, oh, that was actually kind of underwhelming, wasn't yeah. it? You know? Okay, yeah. So I, obviously I there's some nuance to be found here. Fine, okay, let's, so let's find that nuance. Um, hmm. <laughs> You make a good point now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> because like special like I I have found a lot of I found a lot of uh, mileage in connecting with people when I found out that a lot of my friends also didn't enjoy house parties. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've connected with lots of people. Yeah, I'd be like, oh, you know, I actually I actually kept felt kind of uncomfortable. I didn't really like the fact that I had to talk to all these people. Like, oh my god, I feel the same way. And you get yeah. this like, and that would be classed as negativity. And, that, and a blanket yeah, yeah. ban on negativity would not allow that to happen. Precisely. Damn. Okay. So where's the nuance here? When when is it okay to be quote negative? I think like the thing is being negative kind of feels good. <laughs> it's you get like. A, uh, you know, you know what I mean. You get like this sick sort of pleasure from like, you know, <laughs> you know, putting Ed Sheeran down. <laughs> you, sco you, you, you score the criticism points. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you you score some like criticism, and so like, uh, yeah, I think if you're like, uh, yeah, I think ultimately a large part of sort of life and stuff, etc., is uh, <laughs> life and stuff, etc. Okay, yeah, keep going. Uh, is to like connect with your fellow man. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, yes, that's where I say this. <laughs> it's like every episode, I say some kind of line like this. Um, and so like, okay, I think it's bad to, for, it's bad to like go on a negative rant, for example, let's say like you, you are at an event, um, yep. And, you know, people seem to kind of be having a good, like the rest of the group seems to kind of be having a good time. And you're not having, you're not having a great time or whatever. Mm. I think it would definitely not be the time and the place to be like, guys, this is rubbish, you know. I, Let's you know, do something else. <laughs> yeah, that, I think that's definitely a bad time to be negative. Although, having said that, um, there have been instances, for example, when we're, we're at, like at a party or something and someone suggests playing Monopoly and everyone's kind of like, oh, yeah, okay. Oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone needs to be the one to say, okay, all right, <laughs> you know. <laughs> All right, lads, I'm just going to say it. I'm not personally keen on Monopoly, and I just want to know if anyone else is in the same boat. And then you find that everyone else is also not keen yeah, on Monopoly, yeah, but yeah. we're just kind of acquiescing just, just to be positive. Yeah, that's actually so funny when that yeah. happens. It's like, <laughs> it's really obvious as well, because like the rest of the room is like, oh, okay, yeah, I guess we could. <laughs> Okay, so there, there definitely is some, some kind of nuance to this never be negative thing. Okay, is it the difference between complaining and the thing that is voicing your opinions about something but that is not necessarily complaining? Yeah, I feel, I feel like that might be it. So what's a, what, what's a word for voicing your opinion on something that, but, 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 but also not complaining about it? Complaining versus analysis. <laughs> yeah, sort of like neutral dispassionate analysis. <laughs> neutral dispassionate analysis, yeah, NDP. <laughs> no, <laughs> was it NDA? <laughs> NDA, yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay, so complaining versus NDA. Uh, 
Um, okay, no, no, no. I have so I, I'd like to question that a little bit. So let's let's just let's assume that like okay, for example, yesterday I thought the concert was okay. To be honest, I didn't even go for Ed Sheeran or anything. I went to have like a good time with the lads, bit of a road trip, kind of yeah, just hang out with the boys. And actually, incidentally, on that note, on on the way back from services, we struck up conversation with some some lady from up north, and she said, uh, "Have uh, have a safe drive, lads." Afterwards, and we were like, "Yes, yes, more lads." <laughs> <laughs> she called us lads. Oh my god! Yeah, I felt really valid. <laughs> yeah, that was that was that was the dream. <laughs> I've, been, I've been wanting to be a lad all the time. <laughs> Anyway. Yeah, that was nice. So your reason for going to the trip uh, was not Ed Sheeran. My reason, uh, yeah, you know, You're not my as reason. addicted it to Ed Sheeran was, as I am. Yeah, it was a low social optionality kind of thing with the boys. That's why I went. And the Ed Sheeran thing was just like an interesting novel cultural experience that I'd never kind of been part of before. Okay. And so me voicing my cons- like my NDA. That, yeah. that what, what I'm saying in the car, the thing, my rant was actually N- NDA. Yeah, it wasn't complaining. It was more like you know. Wait, what does it, it stand for again? Neutral, neutral dispassionate, dispassionate analysis. analysis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So my rant in the car was purely NDA. And like, if if every, if there was an understanding between the four of us that we all had a good time and yeah. like, you know, we're not we're not actually down about it or whatever. We, we'd have a, a good time even if we thought Ed Sheeran was crap. Yeah. If there was that understanding, then voicing concerns or like, yeah, even quote unquote complaining would be fine because you know that like, you know, we're not here for the thing. We're just here to hang out with each other. Everything else is like, you know, oh, so, on the side. So, so, and, it's, it's, so it's not that you're complaining about, oh, you know, this was a really shit trip guys yeah 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 uh, the, the company wasn't very good <laughs> <laughs> yeah because that's kind of the main reason that you've you've come on the thing whereas yeah. being like oh you know Ed Sheeran's connection with the audience was a, was a bit lackluster yeah exactly and so if the, I mean I like to think I mostly operate in that way where like I don't know I just don't go to I, I typically do things for the social aspect rather than for the whatever experience aspect and so if there is an understanding let's say there was an understanding between every person in the world that everyone kind of operates in this sort of or always having a good time kind of thing regardless of like whether Ed Sheeran connects with them or not yeah. then any kind of complaining would be fine because it's like complaining with the f- with with the sort of preface that like by the way I had a good time and I'm really glad to be here now Ed Sheeran sucks <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. If you could preface any negative, it's any like whatever negativity, whatever. <laughs> yeah, with something like with like you yeah. know <laughs> <laughs> some uh, so, so, some kind of disclaimer. Yeah. Huh. Does that fix it? Does that fix it? So w- what are so? I mean, I've I've had the conversation with several friends about about the about the concept of complaining, and I think complaining itself would possibly make for for a separate episode but essentially like you know when when doctors hang out in the doctor's mess there's a, often a lot of complaining that, go, that that goes on like oh guys you know it's been such a terrible night the rotors i mean the hospital's understaffed and therefore i've had so much to do and i just had a cardiac arrest and it went went, went really badly and stuff and i always think that there is some branch of complaining that is constructive and then there is some branch of complaining that's destructive yeah and i'm never sure where the line is between the two like i know when i see it but i want to be able to you know prospectively define yeah. that line yeah so is it actually just a, a difference of complaining versus NDA neutral dispassionate analysis NDA so last year I went to this like pack sock ball thing at Cambridge yeah. you were there you were singing on stage I think at one point I was there with a bunch of people genuinely I'm not a huge fan of these kinds of events I typically go for the sort of partial social aspect uh, and while I was there I was not really having a great time it was kind of like, I, was, I was kind of bored or whatever oh. and there was an urge to complain not NDA there was oh. an urge to genu- genuinely complain oh interesting like uh, Oh, you know, why we're here kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I, th- I think I, I hope I suppressed it. I can't remember. I, I'm, I I like to think I suppressed it, but I think that would have been a true complaint rather than an NDA. Okay. So what's the difference between between the two? But to be honest, even if it was, even if I was voicing NDA at that during the event, it would have still been a downer on the whole thing for everyone else. And so like there is like a you know there's always a vibe and you don't want to be a downer on the vibe ah here it is here it is all right here we go oh my god i've got it (laughs) (laughs) you want to amplify the vibe if the vibe is like positive and everyone's having a good time and you jump in complaining or nda you're not going to be amplifying the vibe you're going to be like dampening the vibe if the vibe is like doctor's mess everyone's had a rough day feel it feels good to just like let out some steam and talk about i don't know how how bad your patient was or something then it's like a it's like a complaint complaining is the wrong word but it's like a negative vibe and so if you're like actually guys i think we should take a step back and think about how lucky we all are you know we have a really good opportunity here to help people blah 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 like in the middle of 
everyone having a nice old complaint <laughs> about rant, this. Yeah. <laughs> You're sort of uh, dampening the vibe. Yeah. And so it, it's about like amplifying the vibe, feeling the vibe and amplifying it. I don't know, man. What? <laughs> that was really good. I thought, yeah, that was really good. But we're thinking about how to do better and be better or something like that, as, <laughs> <laughs> as, as you put on our podcast like website or something. And I wonder if, for example, for example, you can imagine imagine the situation in like you know a doctor's office on a ward where there's just a, like lots of complaining going on. Whether amplifying that vibe is really the way to do better and tend to be better, mm. or whether it is a case of you know being the bigger man as such and being like, okay, I mean we've had a bad time, but we've got to play the hand that we're dealt, guys. <laughs> we're, still, we're still doing a reasonable job. At least we've got a roof over our heads and got air conditioning on, and we've got some food and some free tea in the doctor's mess. Come on, let's let's be positive about this. You yeah. think people would appreciate that? Like everyone's having like, look, it feel, it feels good to have a collective complaint, whatever whatever the word is, NDA slash complaint. It feels good, yeah. and if you're that guy who's like actually guys i think we should be positive blah, blah, blah. i don't think anyone else in the room is going to appreciate it i think like i think it's 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 sort of like the conflict between short term and long term right okay no but uh, on 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 that point let's say you're in the same situation and people are backbiting or gossiping about someone else no one's going to appreciate if you're like if you change the subject actually actually guys i think it's, it's not right that we're we're speaking negatively about this person if we've got a problem we should tell them to their face yeah. no one's going to appreciate yeah, that yeah, yeah. and yet it would be objectively the good thing to do yes uh, yeah and so i think it comes down to short term versus long term like for example having the kind of complaint any sessions in the doctor's mess is like it's like short-term fun but if that becomes like the culture and outlook all the time that's obviously bad that's long-term bad yeah exactly i think i mean i think like sort of backbiting and sort of gossiping about people is very short-term fun is is it's it's short-term fun but it's extreme it, it's fun it, it's much more dangerous short-term fun than just having a good old complaint about the, the hospital being understaffed you know that's like harmless short-term fun as long as it you know basically i think you can have those kinds of sessions as long as you also bear in mind that it's having a generally positive outlook or whatever, a positive vibe is probably sort of more long-term good. You know what I mean? Uh, I know what you mean, uh, but I like to have blanket rules. <laughs> <laughs> And I like to have a blanket rule saying that complaining in 100% of circumstances is bad unless, with, with the caveat that, that unless it's sort of constructive complaining that will actually change yeah. change your behavior or change management in some way. Um, you know, for example, if someone's complaining about sexual harassment from their boss, that's the sort of thing that is, you know, reasonable to voice to other people because then people can be like, oh my God, I had the same experience, blah, yeah, blah, blah, of course, whatever. Absolutely. You know, so with that, uh, apart from those situations in which it's actually going to change something, you know, complaining about how the hospital is, un is understaffed or complaining about a fellow colleague and how they're incompetent, whatever line of complaint you're on i don't think it's helpful to amplify amplify that vibe so you disagree with my like vibe theory i'm not sure i, I mean i it, it i think it depends what moral lens we're looking at this through are we are we saying that a net a net positive action is one which which the group as a whole appreciates in which case your vibe theory is spot on or are we saying that the net positive action is what kant would have us believe you know if everyone in the world were to do this thing then would it be the right thing to do it probably wouldn't be the right thing to do if everyone in the world were to amplify the negativity yeah, of yeah, complaining yeah. about understanding yeah sure but look it, it, it it comes back to like it's it's a vibe theory with a short term versus long term nuance. So for example, if you had a blanket policy of always being positive, and every time you know on, a, on like a, a, a late on a Friday evening when everyone wants to go home but they're stuck in the doctor's mess and everyone's complaining, if you're always the guy who's like, actually guys, we should be positive, blah blah blah. I think that would be worse than if in that in that particular situation you just kind of join in and amplify the vibe. Okay, I think the ideal and like well, what I'd like to think I would do in that situation is not amplify the vibe. Okay, just like. Like not partake uh partake but in a way that does not necessarily amplify the vibe okay because th th the problem with vibe vibe ampli amplification is that you know um I c i'm thinking back to circumstances when i was in in undergrad and we'd get certain groups of people together who would start you know complaining about something or the other you know controversial or why is my curriculum so white and then it, it, it would become an echo chamber of sorts where everyone is amplifying amplifying the negative vibe and everyone is trying to come up with various microaggressions that they've felt through because their curriculum being too white and in those circumstances, if that if that leads to action, it leads to leads to change, then yeah, fair enough, I'm all for that. But in most in 99% of instances, it didn't. And I think therefore the vibe vibe amplification, yeah, it's. But don't you think they all had a good time? Like you know, it's it, it's cathartic to share you know share your feelings about how you know you think your curriculum is I mean, yeah, too white or whatever. It's, it's cathartic to to smoke and to drink and to, to get drunk and to drown your I'm woes. I'm sure, in but there are there are <laughs> obvious negative externalities with those. Whereas yeah. having a good old rant against the white man who doesn't. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> 
I think there are less obvious negative externalities about having a good at run against a negative white man, uh, against, against the white man, more because it's the fact that it's a negative run rather than the fact that it's against the white man. Yeah, but it just comes back to like negativity being like... Being bad, being bad. Short, short term fun and long term bad. I... And so if someone were to be in a binge drinking scenario, would you think, you know what, lads, I'm going to amplify the vibe by always looking at <laughs> binge drinking. Maybe you would, but I would argue that, you know, net, it's probably a net negative. <laughs> Yeah, sure. I don't know where we were, where we were going with this. So we, okay, so let's let's backtrack a bit. So we're saying that NDA, neutral dispassionate yeah. analysis of events, normally retrospectively, like after the fact, yeah. is is reasonable. Provide you know with the um with the like with the with the disclaimer that everyone knows that this is NDA and not yeah. and not just so we're, we're making a dis- yeah. you don't want to be a downer on the mood. Yeah, we're making a distinction between two types of negativity: NDA, n- neutral dispassionate analysis, <laughs> and complaining. Yes. and so NDA is fine negativity and complaining is not fine negativity with a few caveats like unless it actually leads to some change so what's the difference again between complaining and nda and uh, i mean apart from so, so so complaining is like if i came out of the ed sheeran concert and i was complaining then you guys would maybe feel a bit bad that i didn't have a good time or whatever yeah and it would be kind of a downer whereas if it's understood that i'm having a good time regardless and this is it's NDA, purely neutral dispassionate it's it's not that you had a bad time it's yeah. that you were just doing an interesting analysis yeah without bringing emotions into it yeah and like you know then that's fine even though like it's on the outside might seem like negative i am actually not attaching any sort of judgment to my that thing okay so non non-judgmental in a way so uh, is our blanket statement then <laughs> that it's always good to be non-judgmental <laughs> No, I, I, I think judge, I should. I, I used the wrong word there. I don't think judgmental was the right word for this discussion. But okay, like if you came out of a film yep. and everyone was like, "That was a sick film," you know, everyone loved it, and it was understood that everyone loved it. And then at some point later that evening, you know, once the film vibe had had concluded, yeah, and you're in a new vibe, yeah, and then someone talks about, "Hmm, that was interesting how they, uh, you know, how that character was very two dimensional," <laughs> you know, what I, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what film critics say. <laughs> okay. The, that would be fine, right? Or would you still think, oh crap, I should have gone. I knew it, I knew it. I should have gone to the film myself. I hate my bits. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fine. Um, it's fine because it's not detracting from the film, from, original from, film vibe. From, from the vibe. This, look. Vibe theory. I, I think NDA versus complain is a good distinction. I still think my vibe theory is good. That is generally good to amplify the vibe with some caveats about like not reinforcing a environment which is long-term bad for everyone. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I can I can get on board with that because in in the situation where it's like where the guys like oh actually uh, I don't know if anyone else agrees but I thought Jack Sparrow was a bit two dimensional. Yeah. Um, that is at that point NDA. Yeah. And that is at that point a way of connecting you know just adding adding some you know just just making conversation. Just yeah, chatting. <laughs> yeah, just like talking to each other. Yeah. <laughs> Without worrying. Whereas if he if immediately after exiting the film everyone's like oh my god Jack Sparrow like yeah. freaking love Jack Sparrow and you're like oh actually I thought he's a bit two dimensional. Yeah. Then you become a downer on the mood yeah, and no one likes that. Yeah. You're like contradicting the Okay. Vibe. okay. So I think this is a good point to end on. So we've got this distinction between complaining versus NDA. And we have this, this, we have this idea of vibe theory. Can you talk about vibe theory again, just as a reminder? So what I, I think, is vibe theory? I, I, yeah, I think it, I feel like a, a general good guideline in most social situations is to amplify whatever the vibe is. So if everyone else is like very positive and obviously having a good time, then even if you are not having a good time, it is, you know, you shouldn't voice that because you would be sort of uh, dampening the existing positive vibes. And oftentimes, you know, if everyone's having negative vibes and they're sort of soaking in it, then being the guy who's like, you know, actually going to be positive or whatever is often not great. And the whole group will probably have a better time if you amplify the the, even even the negative vibe with the caveat that you don't want to sort of uh, create a, a, lo- a long-term kind of bad environment where everyone's constantly negative. Um, so now that you've re- rephrased that, I like vibe theory in the positive version of it. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't like the the negative corollary to vibe to your vibe theory. You know, this idea that you should be amplifying negative vibes because that encourages people to amplify backbiting. <sighs> and unless you can insert a nuanced clause into there that says, but not in this, 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 or this circumstance. Backbiting is just a special case. What do you mean it's just a special case? So it's a special it's like, case that you wouldn't want to amplify. Yeah, sure. If everyone's sitting around and chatting about how, literally how they're about to murder someone, that would also be a special case where probably shouldn't join in, probably say something against that. You know, there, there are obviously lots of special cases where where, you know, this thing is bad and you shouldn't partake in it and you shouldn't amplify it. But have, you know, it's fine for people to have a, like a, a harmless moan about something once in a while and it's cathartic and it feels good. Okay. And you, sh- you should amplify that when that is happening, the kind of harmless moan. The harmless moan, okay. <laughs> it's a harmless moan. Uh, 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 so 
So we're saying that if something is harmless, then it's okay to amplify negatively. If yeah. it's harmful in a way that you define in your head at the time, case by case basis, then at that point you should think, am I going to speak up and say something that will attract the scorn of the group initially, but will be welcome in the long-term benefit? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, so maybe it's not actually a distinction between positive and negative. It's just a, the only distinction that matters between like harmful and harmless. Yeah. And like, I'm sure there are harmful forms of like positive vibes, right? Sure. If they're talking about how they're going to murder somebody in <laughs> positive vibes. <laughs> oh my god yeah I can't wait. <laughs> you don't want to amplify that positive vibe <laughs> you're like yeah <laughs> slice his head off yeah so it's like yeah it's it's really just like harmful versus harmless and otherwise just amplify the vibe amplify harmless vibes <laughs> <laughs> my new twitter vibe <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> amplifying harmless vibes okay I think that's an interesting point to end on um, I'd be curious to hear what people have to say about this have you have you, have you you set up a shared gmail account yet because I still don't have access to it no I haven't okay can you do that literally after this recording yeah I'll spend today doing high leverage housekeeping <laughs> Nice, nice. I have, uh, have, I have, we, a have we done a, have we done an episode on that? Uh, we haven't. <laughs> okay, that, that might come at some point when we're desperate for topic ideas. Mm. By the way, um, you, you you may have noticed we're often quite desperate for topic ideas, <laughs> and it, and it often ends up being a scramble last minute to be like, oh crap, what are we going to talk about this week? So if you have any ideas for kind of suggested titles for podcasts, please do send them in via email. Yeah, we do actually have a few good suggestions which I think we can rely on. For yeah, the next, we for a couple of we should make episodes. we we should turn it into, into like a notion board so we actually keep track of these rather than in a Gmail inbox. Yeah, yeah, it could be public and people like upvote ideas oh yes that'd be funny that would be good um, yeah right. why not should we wrap up let's wrap up any insight or funny thing of the week funny thing of the week we're both now searching through our twitter I mean I'm searching through my twitter for funny <laughs> tweets I don't know about you <laughs> so actually so my insight was I don't know when it was but a few episodes ago I can't I, I, I don't even remember what, what, what specific episode it was you implored the audience to start using twitter no but this was during a youtube video of yours which I don't think is released yet we oh from YouTube. it was oh no but we, we have released it as a podcast episode have we yeah oh okay Maybe. That was an in-between episode on the week that we you were in Malawi or something and we yeah. didn't have anything better to do. Um, so that's coming in a future YouTube video and you were saying that it's all about kind of using Twitter properly and connecting with people. Yeah. And like I've been trying to be active on Twitter for like a week and already I've connected with like three people that I've been admiring from afar for like two years and just kind of started engaging with their tweets and then kind of DM'd one of them, had like a video call with them and then like that led to other good things. And now we've got this other girl who I've been following on YouTube for the last two years. That sounds weird. Um, who has agreed to appear in a future episode of this podcast. Yeah. Which is awesome. So like just the, the power of Twitter, man. Like It's I'm, amazing. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. Like you just engage with people and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I've, I've you know, I, I, I tweeted some like random thoughts that I had when I was at work that was like, oh, this would make for a good tweet. And I tweeted it and it got like, you know, 100 likes, like 15 retweets and yeah, boy. all these like new followers and stuff. And it was, it, it feels really good when you're getting like, you know, the notification that people are, uh, engaging with your yeah man it's just about engaging with your fellow man engaging with your fellow man so, the, so so that's my insight of the week that you know this Twitter thing seems pretty legit that's very nice uh, so uh, please follow me on Twitter at Ali Abdal and follow Tamer at Tamer Abdal yep. that'll and be linked in show notes yeah start using Twitter it's, it's amazing cool. see you next week bye bye bye